Hello my soccer universe, <laughs> welcome to the review of the second day of the round of 16 which saw both favorites winning rather comfortably and if it wasn't for a late nonsensical penalty both of these scorelines would have been 3-0 and in both cases I think it was an accurate reflection, I think 3-0 of the difference between the two teams both however had a little, I don't want to say a scare, but you know, there was a possibility that the underdog will take the lead. But there were very, very many pa uh, parallels there. France to me looked more impressive. Um, just have to say, as I said, especially Kylian Mbappé, uh, pretty out of this world. Pretty out of this world, it gotta be said. Yeah, uh, I think he put on a masterclass uh, with uh, one assist and two goals. We have Olivier Giroud now being the lone record goal scorer, although the, his assist giver is probably the one who will take over rather soon. And then he scores two goals that are so... I don't want to say out of this world, but you know, the way he picks his spots, I mean, there's only one way that you can put those goals. Uh, the first one, he just uh, looks, yeah, okay, near corner is open, pull it there with top spin, and the other one with the inside of his foot uh, pulls it uh, to the right. Uh, it was really, 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 really good. Um, whereas for England, uh, sh just at the moment when they were shaky, they just hit with a counter attack, and I got I gotta say the offense of England. Uh, I don't think there are many teams that have as much depth up front as England do. I think France does not have the depth. Maybe Brazil does, uh, but we'll talk about the preview of that game, uh, that qualifier, because I think this will be the outstanding fixture in the quarterfinal. I think uh, for the way it all pans out. But, you know, let's talk about the two games. I mean, the early game was uh, France against Poland. Um, I gotta give credit to Poland for once. I think this was their more, most adventurous outing at the entire World Cup. This was the... Yes, they needed to keep it tight. And yes, France had actually uh, applied quite some pressure early, early on. And most notably a Varane header. It could have gone in. But on the other hand, uh, Poland, I think there was the first chance was kind of a Lewandowski wide shot. And then um, Hugo Lloris, at least play, playing out, he, he, he didn't seem all that safe. I think he got a little bit himself a little bit in trouble. And there was even a triple chance for Poland to take it take, take before that, though. I mean, Giroud had a really golden opportunity where uh, Dembele squares it in and he just doesn't get his feet sorted to put it into the net. So uh, in that sense, yeah, it was open. France were overall the better team. There is no doubt about that. But with some luck uh, and also credit, I just criticized Juris, uh, also credit to him. Uh, he did a good save uh, on, the, on, the, on this triple chance for Poland. And just before the half, it was such a brilliant move where Mbappé has the ball and plays it into Giroud. Makes a, a, a great run. Uh, Gert gets in his free on goal. 1-0 for France. He has the record, which made me very, very, very happy. Um, and France found their breakthrough. And there was no looking back. I never then felt, especially second half, um, you know, they were troubled. And Poland did it actually quite well because they completely isolated their Hernandez. So they were, the only one that came with speed was actually Kylian Mbappé, uh, which they couldn't really halt. Uh, but other than that, uh, it was all France from that moment on. As I said already in the uh, opening monologue, if you like. <laughs> uh, it was, I think, uh, from what well, was the corner kick from Poland where France launches a counter attack that uh, finds Giroud, plays out of Dembele. And then you see the, the Polish defense is three on three. Giroud makes a run out. Uh, and thus opens up Mbappé wide. It is all taken care of uh, in the far corner. Mbappé just uses the tall top score with a, with a world-class finish. Absolutely world-class finish. And then, you know, that settled the game. Uh, then Pelé Giroud could come off, Thuram and Coman come, could come, come on. Also, quite some depth, but not in the numbers that England have. That's the one thing I have to say. But, you know, it, it is good if you can bring those two on. 
Um, and yeah, lay, lay, lay down to, to Ram, actually assistant, but Bay, uh, who chose, chose a far, far corner and uh, is now by far the leading goal scorer at this World Cup with five. If Messi would have converted that pal pal, it would have been a real PSG duel there. Uh, that would have been interesting uh, to see. And I really thought it will end 3 0, and then a stupid penalty is given. Yeah, handball out, I understand. Uh, then Lewandowski steps up, sees his effort saved by Hugo Yoris, but as many egregious uh, fouls that you can do on this. I mean, there were, I think, three French players running in. Yuri's coming out of from his goal line. So, Lewandowski step again. He gets his second uh, World Cup goal. Good on him, but it doesn't do much. Uh, overall, uh, then the evening game was a very, very tense affair for quite a while, I would say almost for 40 minutes, where both teams tried to neutralize themselves as good as they had. Just take the strength away, especially Senegal really uh, knew that uh, the, the key moment for uh, England's builder play is a Declan Rice, so they always shielded him, then they, for they forced England to the outside and, and then tried to press him so that they could make quick counter-attacks. And that actually worked quite well. The problem is that they didn't have the punch up front. That was the real thing that England, uh, uh, that uh, Sen Senegal heard. But Senegal had the early chances. Uh, Dia, I think, had a good shot in there. Um, so there were two or three situations. And especially then around the third of it, there was like, like one uh, misplaced pass by Harry Maguire. And suddenly Senegal seemed to be fully in, 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 in the game, but it didn't last long. Because there was, it needed only one counter attack. Um, the, the ball is uh, gets to Kane, who sends Bellingham, who plays it really nicely back to hand Henderson. And although there are four Senegal defenders in the rough vicinity, Henderson is free, can pick, pick his spot, and it's one nil for England. And then it would have been good, like for the for the US yesterday, that uh, Senegal make it 1-0 into the half because the game is still on. No, they don't manage it because suddenly the momentum completely shifted in in England's way and they even get the second goal um, of this time um, again. Uh, Bellingham sending Foden, putting it over to Kane. Uh, putting uh, Kane into play and uh, he makes his first goal of this World Cup after having already three assists. And that was the game. The latest when Saka made it 3-0 after assist by Foden. Uh, that was the game. I mean, they didn't need to do much anymore. And the game was done and dusted. And uh, was an impressive victory for England overall. Uh, again, I would have liked to see the underdog take the lead. As in so many other games that I saw uh, so, so, so far. But no, but was not meant to happen. Uh, it was... And then England is really good up front. Not so sure about the back, but it's really, really, really dangerous up front. And yeah, let's see where England will go uh, with this setup. Um, they meet now for us. And as I said in the pretext, for me, this is already the standout uh, fixture. It could be if Spain, Portugal really happens, that could go up there. But I think England against France those seem two of the deepest teams in there. I think that France overall more solid, especially on the back, despite, uh, you know, I always have some doubt about Hugo Yoris, but then he makes some great saves. Um, and going forward, you need to stop Mbappé. And I, I, I'm I, really looking forward to see how the English defense will cope with uh, that attacking uh, spirit. But similarly... Similarly, I mean, it, it just what the French defense will do against what England is offering up. Because that's really, really uh, exciting stuff up, up there. This will be a superstar duel. This is, I, this has to me uh, the, a similar flavor as does Germany France uh, had in 2014. There was a tense affair, but that was the point where Germany asserted themselves. This could well be such a game. I don't know for sure. But I have the feeling that whoever makes it out of this game will at least go to the final. Uh, both teams look rather, rather uh, settled. Let, let, let's call it settled. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that one. 
I also think it is time, as I did yesterday, and now we're going to do it, to say goodbye to the eliminated teams. First, Poland. I, I cannot say much redeeming stuff, except that they actually uh, somewhat acquitted themselves well in the first half. But that was one of the least impressive round of 16 uh, teams in the sense that she didn't show almost any attacking ambition throughout the entire group stage and still managed to qualify. Lewandowski got out, got the first two goals and they broke the curse because we knew that Poland does not make it in the round of 16. So, I mean, that is something. But on the other side, I mean, here even in Poland, they are not proud of their team. So, um, very, very mixed bag, very uh, bag. Whereas I think Senegal really acquitted themselves well. Yes, it ended a little, little bit rough and you have to take into account that uh, Sergio Mane could not play and they were missing Idrissa Gay uh, in midfield. So it was a rather, rather um, decimated uh, Senegal squad taking on England. I would have liked to, to, to see them play full strength uh, against the English. Was not to be, but I think they are at a level like the middle European teams, you know, not the top class, but that class below. I think they are a really well coached team. And again, I'll use to say for an African coach, which is always something big. So um, I think Senegal will be a really good team for a while. And they had an excellent year by winning the AFCON, now um, qualifying for this uh, uh, World Cup. And getting out of the group where it actually seemed at times a little bit precarious because you needed to beat Ecuador, but in the end you do. And yeah, against this England team, everyone can play, uh, can lose big. I think that's not a shame. So with that, goodbye Poland and goodbye Senegal. Well, with that, I think it's time that we look at the overall favorites. Uh, up top, not much has changed. It's still Brazil ahead of Argentina and France. And again, based on the ratings, I probably would put France and now even England ahead of Argentina. I uh, gotta see where was, what Spain will be doing. Uh, but those are the top five with the Netherlands. I think a dangerous sixth because I think Levan Hall is kind of the Bill Belichick of the World Cup. Uh, kind of really good at taking away the strengths of the opponent uh, of a not so great Dutch team. Let's uh, also say that. Uh, Portugal and Croatia rounding out the top eight. Few teams already eliminated. So yeah, Brazil, Argentina, France, England, Spain. Hi. Let's see. Going forward, tomorrow we have the next round of 16 matchups. And I have, 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 have to say this is probably the... How, how, how to say the, the The previous four were more excited. The previous two days. This one is the one where it seems... It's more underdog day. I mean, we have probably the least heralded matchup between Japan and Croatia. I remember this in 2006, a very nil-nil draw. That's probably the biggest chance that we have that an underdog will make it into the round of 16, although the Croatia seems to be very battle-hardened and, you know, Japan plays in bursts. But uh, we got to see that. And then a South Korea team that I honestly, I did enjoy watching so far. But I don't see them do anything against this uh, Brazil side. But yeah, there's a potential that we get a Japan-South Korea quarterfinal, which in a way would be brilliant. I, I don't quite see it. I think it, it's again going the favorites through. I think we have a bigger chance for an upset the day after. But anyway, however, the, the game still need, need to be played. So... In any case, I would like to know what you thought about the games today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.